Do you think everybody should go vegan? Yes, yes, everybody should go vegan if you agree that you shouldn't harm animals, right? I, I can't tell Jeffrey Dahmer to go vegan, right? He's a madman, right? Going vegan is not a universal thing. It's, it's about your choices. And do you think you should be vegan, right? That's a question you should be asking yourself. Do you think you should go vegan? I can't answer that for you. Of course I think you should be vegan, but the question is, should you? What do you think? Is a human life equivalent for, of a life of an ant? No, of course not. But that's not what veganism means, right? As a vegan, I'm not, I never say that an ant is equivalent in every way to a person. What I'm saying is that ants have sufficient value to render them part of my moral framework. Um, and this applies to all animals because all animals that are sentient deserve rights, in my view. Now, of course, it would be dumb of me to say that ants are the same as humans in terms of value. But at the same time, they still are sentient beings who we shouldn't just go out of our way to kill and harm. I think we should do our best to minimize cruelty to all animals, period. People love to say value, but it's value is actually not as relevant as you think it is. What if the girl is everything for you but hates veganism? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Why is it on the debate chart if you don't want to debate about it? Go ahead, come up, debate me. I'm waiting. <laughs> you have enough followers, go ahead, let's debate. Ants are not sentient. They are sentient. Ants feel, they feel pain. What if you die and find out God is real? Nothing would change about me. Nothing would change if God is real. I would still be the skeptical person I am today. I would still be asking questions. How do I know you're God? What's the evidence that you're God, right? What's the proof that you're a God? Why should I worship you? These are questions I would still be asking, even if your God exists. Even if I met somebody who you, you call as God. So I would... And if he punishes me for being an atheist, well, I'll laugh and say, wow, how dumb of a God you are to punish somebody for using their brain, using their rationality. Um, and so for me, it's a win-win. I'm honest, I'm genuine as an atheist. And if I die and God's real, I'm still genuine. That's what I prefer more. I care about having dignity. I have enough of dignity and enough courage to not just become a blithering idiot if God came before me and go, yes, master, yes, master. I have dignity, right? So if God exists, nothing about me would change. I would still be the same person I am. And this is a powerful perspective. So... I am completely at peace. I am completely at peace with whatever the future holds for me. Completely at peace. My, my expectations are very, very low. When it comes to things like spirituality and religion. And that is very freeing. And uh, a perspective that I wish only everybody could have. The world would be a much better place. If we weren't so hung up on the on this religion stuff, um, we had so many built up expectations. It's true freedom, yeah. Well, when I say freedom, I don't mean absolute freedom and everything. I mean we're still subject to the laws of nature, right? We're still just going through the motions, but. There is freedom in that process, right? Even though we're going through the motions, you can still feel free in the sense that you just let things be. And that 
that is freedom to me. You will join, but I have to know what your idea is about veganism. <laughs> oh, so now you don't want to come up. Now you're scared to come up. Veganism is about minimizing animal cruelty. That's it. It's about doing what you can with what you have. Treating others with respect as much as you can. That's it. And matter their species. What is the point of it all? Make it make sense. Maybe that question doesn't make sense. Maybe asking what, what's the purpose of it all? What's the point of life? Maybe that question doesn't make any sense. Maybe the point is that there is no point. <laughs> Maybe the entire purpose of our existence is that we just are. There's, some kind, there's a beauty in that, right? There's a beauty in just existing and just being. There's a beautiful aspect to that reality. But if there is a purpose, if there is a reason as to why we exist, I would sure love to see it. But as far as I can see, it's not apparent to us. <laughs> so if there really is this big purpose for us existing, if there really is this big objective reason as to why we exist, it doesn't seem very evident. And if it's not that evident, why do we care about it so much? Why should we care about it if it's so obscure? If it's so hidden from us, why, why does it exist if it's so hidden from us, right? So that, that's how I see that. If there is a purpose, objectively speaking, okay, great. Let it come to me. But until that moment, I'm going to go after what I want to do for others, helping other people, making life better for others, exploring the world. And that is my goal. And I don't need objectivity for that. If I'm being honest, I have zero knowledge of this. So I want to learn from you. Great. Go on, go on my YouTube. Go look at my videos. Go look, look at my perspective. Look at research. Go, go learn about the animals. Go learn about uh, plant-based foods. Go learn about... Learn. Learning is the key, right? Knowledge is the key. Learning is the key to the world. If you, if you can learn it, you can do anything. What's up, plants and plates? Thank you, man. Thank you. No, thank you, man. Thank you for your activism. Um, I try. I'm doing the minimal amount, honestly. Posting videos, that's the least that we can do. Um, there's so much more we can do. But I am looking for vegans to for my YouTube channel. If you guys, if you wanna, if you're a vegan and you wanna come in and have a talk with me on YouTube, let's do it. Send me a DM. I think veganism is pointless because it depends on the person's person uh, morality. Well, so does every other moral claim, right? Murder is our. It depends on my morality, right? The fact that I don't like murder, right? The, the fact that I think murder is wrong also hinges on my own moral opinions, right? It's inescapable as far as I can see that morality is subjective. Being vegan is pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's vegan. People that are vegan are causing way less harm to the world, to the animals, by far, right? We're advocating for animal rights. That's better than what you're doing. Most people understand that animals are sentient. Most people understand that animals don't deserve to die. Most people love their pets. They love their dogs. They love their cats. Even rabbits and frogs and fish. People love animals. It's obvious. Humans are kind beings, generally speaking. We're not bad. But there's a sense of hypocrisy here. When you say you love animals, then you go and buy them in the store and you eat them and you take their body parts from them. Right? There's a hypocrisy that we've become normalized to. And that's the problem. We have 
fell, fall vict fell victim to this mentality, this comfortable mentality that says, yeah, animals are just objects and I can pick and choose which animals are for me, for my benefit and which animals deserve to live. That's the issue. The issue is that we have this lazy mentality when it comes to others. When did I become vegan? About five years ago. Veganism is better for the environment. Yeah, but remember, veganism is not even about the environment. It's about the animals. And uh, the environmental benefits are just a side benefit. Even though it's so much better, right, for the environment, it's still just a side benefit. So what does that tell you about the benefits of veganism? They're tremendous. But the reason why there's so much resistance against vegans is because our culture has been has fostered this mentality that eating animal products is perfectly normal. We've normalized it to a degree that we see people who are sticking up for animal rights as bad, as wrong, right? Oh, stop forcing it on me. Meanwhile, they force pigs in gas chambers and force animals in cages to sit in their own feces and urine forever. That's, that's hip hypocritical to say the least. And it's so obvious, but it's not obvious. But people glance over it because they're letting their they're letting their this mentality get to them, right? And we all suffer from this cognitive dissonance. We all do it. We all suffer from it sometimes. But the goal is to get better, to improve. It's pouring here, really, In San Diego. It's pouring. Oh, it's the rainy season. It, it's been raining here for <clears throat> a few days, actually. It's just abnormal for winter here. When, to, typically in winter, it's it's very dry here. And uh, I miss the sun. I haven't seen the sun in two days. Typically, we always get sun here in Florida. And I love sun tanning. But hopefully, Sunday or Monday, I can do that. You've been thinking about going vegan. Good, think, but learn, right? Also learn and then put into action. The hate messages on your Instagram are so gross to the other people, yeah. And I get many though. Those are just like, those are like not even the worst of what I get, right? I get so many. But I'm not here to spread hate against religious people. I'm here to show you that I don't, I don't send those messages to show people that they're bad people. Because generally speaking, people don't mean harm. It's, it's the indoctrination that I want to expose, right? The indoctrination of somebody's mindset who is heavily indoctrinated to the point where they think that their religion is theirs, that they, that it is their own, that they own their religion, that it's theirs and that it's exempt from criticism that nobody can criticize it. And that if you do, you're, you're a bad person. And, um, that's why I show this because it, it's, it's showing you what indoctrination can do, how, detrimental these things can be for our mentalities. Religion causes way more harm than people think, especially from, from a religious perspective. Because when you're religious, you don't think what you're doing is wrong, right? The, the people who comment those terrible things to me don't think they're being wrong. They think they're actually, in fact, if anything, they think they're doing what, what God wants them to do, right? Fight for their religion, be warriors for their religion. And, and that's, that's precisely the problem. That when you're religious, you gloss over these issues that, and you don't see the impact you're having to others. That's why I'm so loud. Because I'm trying to show people that you might not see it, but you are causing harm. 
And um, yeah, this is how we should be. Always thinking. Oh, we should always criticize beliefs. That's why I welcome criticism. I want you to criticize my beliefs. Go ahead, attack. Go ahead, debate me. Right? Go ahead. Let's debate. Let's exchange ideas. Show me that God is real. Show me that veganism is bad. Go. Show me. I'm wel- I welcome criticism. I welcome argumentation against me. Go ahead. But guess what? I'll come back with with arguments. I will defend my belief with logic and evidence. The same can't be said for my opponent. And that's why um, it's important to, to, to not think that your beliefs are untouchable. I think that we should, you know, I, I talk about this in my video, in my book as well, how for 20 years of my life, nobody has ever challenged me on my belief. Nobody ever questioned my belief when I was, until I was 20 years old. For 20 years of life in modern society, I was never questioned once about why I believe what I do. Not even once. What does that tell you about the society we live in? It tells us that they don't care. There's a laziness. There's a stark laziness that poisons people. It's an infection. And um, it tells us that we can't question, we can't criticize. It's taboo. What does your parents tell you? Keep quiet. Don't talk. Don't, don't be loud about it. Shh, keep it quiet. Keep it to yourself. It's personal. No, it's not personal. Your religion is not fucking personal. Because your religion can be used as a vehicle for how you vote, how you behave, how you act towards others, what you say to other people. You can use these things as tools to advance your narrative, advance your agenda, advance war. So that's why um, I'm here to change that. I'm here to break that barrier. The re- there's a reason why I'm, a, I'm abrasive. It's not because I'm a bad person or I'm a mean guy or that I'm always angry. No, I'm rarely angry. I'm, a, I'm purposefully abrasive because I want to show people that their religion isn't the thing they think it is. That their religion is touch. It is challengeable. That it is touchable. That we can break it. That it is not impervious. Um, and that's the kind of persona I want to promote. There's a reason why I'm this way. When I on my entire social media presence, it's it's the persona to show people that these beliefs are not untouchable, and that anybody can do it. Anybody can attack it, and and when they are attacked, they're easily attacked. They're fragile. They're very very fragile foundations. They're a house of cars waiting to tumble over. And and that's what I'm trying to promote and also stop, help people with when they're religious because they'll never see it. But yeah, I'm after a world that's better for everybody. That's all, right? And I think the actions, the actions that I'm, the things I'm active, I'm, I'm advocating for, will lead to a better and have led to a better place. Science and critical thinking skills and veganism and you know, atheism. These are things that have made life better for many. 
and, and not just not just mentally, right? Not just, but in all aspects of our lives. Veganism, the foundation to our belief systems, uh, when it comes to God and all these things, from that, from our most foundational belief systems, everything else comes about, right? So, how's vegan life in Florida? Great. Florida is interesting because. very diverse place in all regards but I think that uh, I would love to travel more I love to shop. That, that would be a goal for me um, 1.5 liters is crazy hydration yeah I drink 1.5 liters at least per day plus all the water in my food lots of fruits vegetables with water in them what do you think the world going to be like in the 21st century? <laughs> you mean 22nd century? Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer. It, so as we project into the future more and more, the harder and harder it gets to predict. And this was true for all times because technology is has an exponential growth to it. So when you're projecting into the future, it gets harder and harder and it's, there's a compounding effect, right, of advancements. And the more advancements you get, the faster change happens. So there's a very exponential growth and change. So when, I, when you're asking me what's going to happen in 100 years, that's a very difficult question to answer. But I know you don't like that answer, so let me try my best. Um, we know the trends in the world today is moving towards quantum computing. Digital computing is terrible because not only is it slow in terms of calculations, but it also doesn't have the ability to simulate things very well. Very difficult, it's very hard to simulate things with the digital computing, whereas with quantum computing, it's in its nature. Quantum, using superposition of particles, you can simulate things very quickly. And that's going to be a game changer for the future because imagine simulating the human genome or the human brain. Imagine being able to simulate an entire human brain on a computer and being able to take a human brain and copy it, multiply it. That's the future of computing. And this is going to happen within our lifetimes to the point where we're going to have a computer possibly as smart as a human being, if not smarter. And if that happens, then, um, and if it's multipliable, if it's reproducible, well, then we've just created an entire, entirely new species of intelligence that will now carry us forward into the future. Um, Quantum computing is going to be powerful for artificial intelligence, and that will change us forever. We will merge with AI. I think we will be biologically irrelevant in the future. As our, there's only so much we can do with our biological bodies. So the future I th I see in the next century or so, our biolog we we leave our biological bodies behind in favor of mechanical bodies to some degree. And um, I see a world where there's a va a va vastly different than our world today. It's hard to predict, but that's all I can say is that the world will be different in ways that we can't even imagine. Do you think being agnostic makes more sense than atheism? Because we can't know for sure. Well, agnosticism refers to knowledge claims about something, right? So when I say I'm agnostic, it means I don't know if there's a God, but an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in a God. So you can be agnostic and atheist at the same time, right? You can be agnostic atheist in the sense that I don't believe in a God, but I don't know if there's a God or not. I just don't, I don't see evidence for one. And that's my position. But I think it utterly, completely makes sense to, to be a Gnostic atheist 
one who does take the affirmative position that God does not exist, depending on the definition of God, right? If God is a square circle, then that God can't exist. So when it comes to the Christian God or the Muslim God, of course, those things can't exist because they're defined illogically. But when it comes to God in the general sense of a, a being who makes things, who's powerful, well, that's hard to, to you know, uh, disprove. The point is that it depends on the claim about God. And sure, I can't know everything about the universe in that sense of agnostic, but at the same sense, there are some things we can say they're likely not true. And for the most part, that's the most important thing. For the claims that we have been presented with, none of them make any sense. What, what makes more sense for there to be one God or multiple gods? God, what does that mean? What does the word God mean, right? This is the most fundamental issue that theists never grasp. What does God mean? It's an ambiguous word. If I, if, I ask, if I ask a thousand people what God is, I get a thousand different answers. How is saying the word God useful? What do you mean by God? What is God? What do you define it to be? That's the better question to ask. Have I ever dated, debated a pastor or are they too scared you'll cook them in the loser job? <laughs> um, yeah, I've debated a few pastors. Um, it, I've even talked to, I don't know if you guys know Ryan Mullins. He's a, he's a Christian philosopher. He's highly regarded. But I, As far as I can see, the arguments that Christians give us are bad. They're all bad. And there is not a single one that any philosopher I know of has that even remotely gets to a God or even remotely gets us closer to a God. So I don't care about debating a pastor or not. I'll debate anybody. But for theists, they love to appeal to authority and say, oh, this philosopher will be, why don't you debate philosophers? Okay, well, th they have the same arguments you have, right? So it's like, if you, can, if you can give me a great argument for God, fantastic. But I have yet to see one from anybody, whether or not they're a philosopher or Christian pastor or whatever. Do you think religion will ever go away? No. And that's good. I never said I, I hate religion. I never said that. The only thing I hate are people who use religion to do bad things. But religion itself is a very human thing. Religion is a human endeavor. It's the expression. It's actually a very beautiful thing. It's an expression of our imaginations, our creativity. It reflects our imagination. It reflects how we see the world, our perspectives our human perspective. It's a beautiful thing. And so when you ask, will, will religion ever go away? No, as long as we're human, there will always be religions because there will always be questions that we have about reality that we can't have answers to. There will always be imaginations we have. There will always be things to learn. And we'll always there will always be room for people to produce these different imaginations. And in some senses, Marvel, comics, the comics is a form of modern religion, right? Every day, we, every, every year, we go to the movie theater, watch the movies religiously. We, and for those two hours in those movie theaters, we feel like we're part of their world, of these superheroes, these supervillains, their world, right? We feel we, we are so enveloped in these things. And we want to be part of it, right? We feel like there's a bigger thing. There's a bigger world out there for us to be part of. And that's what Marvel does for us. 
Why do people dress up in these costumes and go to go to these rituals? You know, Comic Con and all these rituals. We go there, we we they recite their sayings. We love these characters. We're so in love with these characters. That's a form of modern religion to me. And but the point, but the problem, the difference is that those same people at Comic Con, when they leave Comic Con, they no longer believe that these things are real. Right? They 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 put the costume down. They go back to their lives. That is a healthy religion. That is healthy. And that's how you know you're progressing when you when you hold to something for a temporary amount of time and willing to change. That's healthy. For a temporary amount of time and willing to change. Hello? Hello? What do you got? You there? Oh, sorry. I uh, block. I canceled you. Mike, let me ask you a question. You said you you don't hate religion. Why'd you wear a trash bag on your head mocking Muslims? Why'd you say fuck Jesus? Oh, because Jesus was a mass villain. So you don't hate religion, but you mock religion? Yeah, because religion mocks me. Your religion mocks me. Your no, religion we don't mock says... anybody. Oh, okay. Do you think I deserve to die in hell? So do you do you think it's did I no, when does religion ever say you deserve to die? Do you do you think I deserve to, to burn in hell as an atheist? No. So you don't think atheists deserve no, to Christian burn in hell? will tell you that. Oh, so you think so when I die I will never I will not go to hell? That's not my judgment, that's God's judgment. So answer my oh, question. Why did you mock okay. Muslims? Why did so, you wear a trash bag on your head to mock okay, Muslims? So, so according so according to your religion, where will I, I have all the that? screenshots and videos, Mike? Platform? This is why your platform is so little. Platform? You mock, you mock religion. You don't debate religion. Platform? When it comes to your religion, do you think I will go to hell or heaven as an atheist? What do you think? I don't know where you're, I don't know where you're going to go. Okay. What do you think though? Based on I don't your know. belief. Answer my question. Why do you mock religion? Because religion mocks me. No, no, no. Why your do you? Religion, your religion you says hate, I should burn in hell. Your religion says I'm too dumb to have my own morality. You I hate need to religion, burn. Mike. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Okay, so do you have an argument for us today for God? You get itchy when we say this to you. We can see yeah, it. Yeah, it's irrelevant and not, it's not useful. It, it makes you itchy. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, I, I don't have any. I don't have any itches right now. I just want you to give evidence for you God. You get itchy, Mike. Where? Where am I itchy? My ass. You get itchy and your legs are moving. We 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 know, Mike. You nope, you get itchy. I'm you get itchy fine. around Muslims. My ass is perfectly fine. You, you get I mean, itchy you want around Christians. You get itchy for me around you Yahweh's. You get itchy around the Protestants. You get itchy around any religious you want, man. You want to scratch my ass, mate? You want to scratch my ass? You're an itchy man because you know that we rebuke you. Okay, come and scratch my ass then, and, and give me evidence for God. Okay. You get itchy, Mike. Okay, go ahead, scratch my crotch for me. So why do you, can you answer my question why you why you put trash bags on your head to mock the Muslim faith? See, Islam is a religion that, that is- I didn't ask you that. I asked you, why do you put people. trash bags on your head to mock because, their-, because, their religion, because religion Because religion mocks me. So you, so you think that because religion mocks you in not a way that, that's disrespectful towards you, but just in a way that they're following their beliefs. You Nowhere think, in their religion does it yeah, say anything yeah, bad about you as an atheist. I'm, I'm asking you, Mike, why do you put a trash bag on your head when you mock, when you talk about religious people and, and change your voice into religion, an Arabic tone or into an Indian tone? Why do you do that? Because religion mocks us as people, right? Religion says that we can't. Right, so, so, so being hateful God. is, is a result. That your, your religion says that we can't be good without your God, that we have to be saved. That we have, we we're ignorant without God, right? We need godly knowledge. You to are be ignorant with God, without God. Your, God, your God. your religion says that I deserve to be burned. That's not. That is not respectful. Did you come? Did you come before or after my religion? I don't care. Do you have evidence? Answer for your my God? question. I know you don't care because you get itchy, Mike. So you why do you wear trash you bags on your head, mocking Muslims? Because religion. Because Islam mocks me and us. You still haven't given me a good reason as to why they mock you in a way that you're disrespecting, you're causing hate towards their, I their explained, religion. I, I just explained to you that religion, that Islam says that I deserve to die. Literally. That's my, 
Do you, do you wear a trash bag because you got lice or something? No, it's because I'm trying to show people how ridiculous Islam is. And how so you change your voice, mock Just their like voice, so you, change, you mock their culture because you, it's you think it's culture, funny? It's not a culture, it's a religion. Wait, so religion is a culture? You're damn right, I will mock their religion since it mocks us. No, no, no. Why do you mock people's cultures, Mike? It's not a, is, is Islam a culture? Absolutely. No, it is not. It's a religion, just Wait. as Christianity is a religion. It's not a culture. <laughs> Mike, so why do you wear trash bags on your head to to mock their religion and it's then put your hands people, up it's just, it's and you change people. your voice? Yeah, it's to show people how petty religion is. Now, do you have an argument for God? I don't need to give you the argument for God because we have so many arguments for God. You just won't take it as an atheist. You're... Go ahead. Give us one. Give us your best one. No, we won't give you any because you can't even explain the Big Bang, Mike. Oh, uh, okay. I can't you explain can... the Big Bang. You want me to explain it for you? No, explain to me. Was there matter before the Big Bang? Yes or no? No. no. So there was no matter before the Big Bang. That means life can no life can create life. That's not possible in science. It's never been demonstrated. So answer my question: Why do you mock religion? Why do you wear a trash yeah, bag on so, your head? So life is. Why an do you change your property? voice? Do you would you do that to people's so faith? Life, or you just do so that? Life, are you just a Twitter? Are you a keyboard warrior, Mike? So life is an emergent property of non-life. Mike, agree? are you a keyboard warrior, or would, would you do this in real person in real mm -hmm. life to a Muslim's face? Would you sit you there and put a trash bag on your head and dance in front of them think, and, not, and change you, your voice? Do you still think water is alive? Answer my question, Mike. Do you still think water is alive? There's alive water. Yes, there's living water. <laughs> okay, what water can reproduce? Mike, I know you're doing this to get your views up, but you'll never be a creator. Okay, great. I hope so you didn't quit your day job for this. It, so go ahead and demonstrate that God I hope you didn't. Stuff. I hope you didn't quit, quit your day job for this, Mike. I hope you actually have evidence for God. I hope you didn't create, quit your day job for this. I hope, I hope you didn't quit your brain. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you didn't quit your brain for religion. <laughs> oh, I will do anything for my Lord. Oh, even rape? Like I said, I will be on the battlefield for would my you Lord. Grape, would you grape somebody for your religion, for Jesus? <laughs> would you grape somebody to be an atheist? No. Okay, so I wouldn't do that. Okay, so would you grape for Jesus? No, he would never ask me to do something like that. He did in Deuteronomy twenty-two twenty-eight. 28. No, he didn't, because if you look into... Tell okay. me what it says. Tell me what it says, Mike. Deuteronomy twenty-two twenty-eight says that we can own people as sex slaves. Wait, no, no, no. Show me. Okay, so where does it say that you can gra that he's telling somebody to go grape somebody? somebody? Spoils of war? No, you don't understand spoils the Bible, Mike. War. You don't have a say that as an atheist. Is, You're seven percent of the population. You take our control. You are controlled off okay. of us. You are controlled okay. off of our religion, Mike. There's okay, eighty eighty seven percent of the world believes in a God. You're seven percent of the world. You're a nobody. And if we Great. went to so war, you know who this you know who would what? prevail, Mike. You know who would prevail. We went to war. That's all I'm going to say. Stop mocking religion. Stop wearing trash bags on your head. Yeah. We rebuke so you in the name of Jesus. Religious? We rebuke all devils in the name of Jesus. All the demons that prowl on you. We rebuke you. Oh no, the devil. Yes. We rebuke, rebuke you. Me. You're getting itchy, Mike. Goodbye. Jesus. You're getting itchy, Mike. Goodbye. I'm getting itchy all over because Satan's all around me. All right. Do you have any actual evidence now? Oh, he ran away. Okay. That's all he wanted to do. Uh, you're welcome to come and give an argument. Good day, Mike. How are you? Great. What do you got? Uh, you know, I'm. I think uh, I'll do a little bit of a uh, uh, intro. Or not an introduction. I um, I'm an atheist as well, so I don't necessarily want to talk about God per se. I find that quite boring. Um, but I did have a question, because um, I'm, I'm curious about the veganism and evolution elements. So in relation to the veganism, um, what's your view on vivisection? On what? On animal experimentation. Oh, yeah, I think it's wrong. I think we should minimize it as much as possible. Okay, so so minimizing it, it's different to, to banning it, isn't it? Yeah, that, it, it's hard to say banning something entirely when we know that medicines and drugs that people require require animal testing. But as a vegan, I want to advocate for less of that. Okay. All right. So, so you're just advocating for more a, a relatively vegan position, not necessarily a vegan one, an absolute vegan one. That's basically so what, what you're what saying. Do you think, so veganism means I want to, we want to minimize as much as practically possible. It's not, a, it's not a saying that we, we have to stop all or ban all suffering. 
Okay. All right. So why why do um, why do vegans insist on um, disrupting those things then? Because if they don't want to get rid of it all, you're harming animals, right? You're harming so many animals that don't need to be harmed. That's the that's the problem, right? Well, I guess so. Um. <sighs> okay. Um. So do you, do you, do you see humans as equal to to sentient animals or not? Yeah, we are sentient animals for sure. Okay, so if we're equal, then really we we should have the same um, moral expectation, shouldn't we? Those animals. Um, morally speaking, we should consider animals as we do as humans morally, for sure. So are they the same or not though? So we, so we should, way? we should, so we're, we're special, are we? In what we're way? the only ones that understands morals. Morally speaking, we're the same. We're, but we're all sentient. We're all conscious. We all don't want to die. Don't have to die. That's how we're the same. I agree that there are differences between us and the other animals, but we're not special in terms of morality. I don't think that we deserve some kind of special moral exception. Uh, I think animals deserve more rights and more consideration. Hmm. But we don't expect them to actually do the same thing. What do you mean? Well, I, I don't know. It just sounds like you, you're saying, like you're sort of talking both ways. You're saying that they're equal, but they're not equal. Right? So we're, we're a special case in that we have extra power, quote unquote, power to actually go ahead and um, yeah, action our morals and, and impose our will on animals. So you seem very confused. My position is very simple. I want to not, I want to cause as least amount of harm as possible to the animals. It's that simple. That's my only thing. I consider animals in my moral framework because they are morally the same as humans. But I think that we, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not, they're not the same in every single sense. But the point is that we, I want to minimize animal cruelty as much as I can. That's it. It's that simple. And what's your argument? Okay. I don't have an argument. I just wanted to clarify um, how strong or not you felt about things like animal experimentation because you know we wouldn't be where we are today without some of this stuff and quite a few vegans would oppose it altogether saying that it's not necessary yeah, everybody, everybody everybody's different i mean vegans are all different my position is simple if we don't have to harm animals we shouldn't if we don't have to experiment on it we shouldn't. You know, I think there are some cases where animal yeah. testing is required to save human lives and I think that human lives are more valuable than animals in that sense. But morally, we should still consider them. That's all. Okay. So, so humans are more important if an ethics committee says that they are. They're more important in terms of value, in terms of contribution to society. In terms of moral value, there, there's no difference. Okay. All right. No, that's fine. I, I don't want to um, keep going. That's all good. Thanks for that. All right. Um, so People that are religious are very emotional when it comes to their beliefs. And that's what we've seen today. <laughs> Somebody getting angry over a, a trash bag? Doesn't make any sense to me. It's to show people how petty and ridiculous religion is. What it makes you do and say silly things. Religion makes people walk around a black box. Once a year, they go walk around a black box and you go, that's silly, right? The point is that religion makes us do silly things. And that's why it mocks us. It mocks the human intellect. It tells us that we should be silly. We should act and say these silly things. So I mock religion because religion mocks us.
Veganism, veganism is a moral high horse. No, what's, what's the moral high horse is to sit there and pretend you have the authority to abuse and, and dismember any animal you want to because you feel like it. That's, an, that's a moral high horse. You think that you're so morally authoritative that you get to decide which animal gets to die and which animal gets to survive because you feel like it, because your taste buds are pleasurable or pleasured. That's a moral high horse. Okay. Um, who are you to say that you get to slaughter animals because your taste buds are better? Who are you? You would never hold that same position when it comes to humans. You would never say that we ought to slaughter people because they taste good. So why do you do that to the animals? And if you don't, can't come up with an argument, you have no justification. Everybody go follow my YouTube, please. False equivalency. I'm not equivocating animals to humans. I'm trying to show you that morally speaking, there's no difference significant enough to render us justification to cause harm. That's the point. There's no morally relevant difference that is sufficient enough to, to, uh, to justify harming animals. That's your job, because if you can't come up with a justification, then you either concede you're hypocritical or you go vegan, right? That's the, your only two options is to concede you're, you're hypocritical and you're a bad person or go vegan <laughs> and grow balls, grow balls and go vegan. What is a tachyon? Uh, I believe it's just some atomic particle. Um, if I remember, it's... Mm, I believe it has a nuclei, but I don't know. I'll take a look at that. Am I a bad person because I'm not vegan? That's a question you have to ask yourself, right? Do you think it's wrong to eat animals or harm animals? If so, then you shouldn't eat them. Eating meat doesn't make you a bad person. Well, it does to me, right? To me, if you if you're if you're harming animals for no reason, that's a that's a bad person to me. That's a bad action. Um, the same thing. If I told you that my friend takes cats and slits their necks open that you would say that's a bad person right well the same applies to non-vegan that the way i see it is that you are causing animals harm by literally cutting their bodies open and eating it right for no good justification that's how i see you and that's based on your actions so Yes, I would say that you're a bad person. That's, but that's a question for you to answer yourself. I'm not here to say that I know for a fact or that, that you're absolutely a bad person. What I'm here to say is based on your actions, I would deem you as a bad person for doing that. How did water come onto your, onto the earth? So water is in frozen form ice. And we know that in the early solar system's history, when the sun was newly formed, um, you have the remnant material surround it in gas form, and then it precipitated to become solids, ice, as it got pushed further away from the sun. So on the outskirts of the solar system, we have a lot of ice and a lot of rocks like hydrates which are contain hydrogen embedded in their clay or in their rocky material so a lot of this ice can be locked into these rocks and these rocks a lot of them called carbonaceous chondrates can um, over time bombard the earth's planet and uh, strike their surface they decrystallize they melt essentially and they um, become free water in the form of rain as it become hot as it reaches the atmosphere they, they vaporize they become gaseous water they rain upon the earth become oceans and lakes and rivers 
a lot of water also came from the earth itself. A lot of a lot of those hydrates were inside the earth itself in its formation, and eventually those decrystallized and seeped into the surface. I guess I care more for the subjective morality. That doesn't make any sense. In your ethical framework, do you think we should harm animals or not? Do you think it's better to not harm animals or to harm animals? Which one's better? And if you agree with me that we should not harm animals, then you should be vegan. It's that simple. A lot of people love to do this analysis, this ethical analysis, like before they talk about veganism. That's irrelevant. All that's relevant is your position. Do you think we should harm animals? If not, go vegan. It's a simple logic. The earth used to be a water planet. Yes. Um, before plate tectonics, um, it was harder for ridges and mountains to form, hence the water, there was a more equal, e equal um, surface level. And you would have a lot of water. Um, but once plate, te once plate tectonics took over, you have continents form and, and you have rivers and aquifers and water settle in, in the subsurface and in ice. And that's why today we have water and land. You can't overlook the God particle. Yes, I can. It's just a particle. It's, it's not God. <laughs> so um, everybody go follow my YouTube right now, link in bio. I have so many great videos up there. I have reaction videos. Please go follow me on, t on uh, YouTube. Appreciate, I would appreciate it so much. I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers. I want to get to 2,000 by the end of the weekend. Hopefully. That's my goal. Veganism cannot help me get to a lean 200. Oh, y yes, it sure can. Absolutely. You can, and in fact, going plant-based is one of the Easiest ways to lose weight. Easiest ways to lose weight. And be lean. There's lots of protein as lots of vegan bodybuilders. So 